Hello and welcome to Clarinet Ninja. Today we're going to be talking about mouthpieces. Specifically, five Van Dorn mouthpieces. These five Van Dorn mouthpieces are mouthpieces that I have played in my life professionally with a number four V12 read. Years ago, I made the choice that I wanted to play a V12 number four. And I found mouthpieces that work well for me in that framework. I'm not suggesting that be how anyone else decides what mouthpiece they should play, but it's where I'm comfortable. It's what I do. Uh, particularly in the beginning stages of clarinet playing, I would not suggest deciding what read you want to play and fitting a mouthpiece to that. But it's what I do and I want to come clean on that right now. I also want to make it clear that while this may seem like an advertisement for Van Doren, they don't have anything to do with this. They did generously loan me a 5RV Liar and an M30 because I can't find those in my unorganized home, which is a little embarrassing, but I appreciate their help. So what we're going to do today is look at what makes a mouthpiece something that you might want to play on and why it is that I actually have these particular five Van Dorans, but also, I mean, I have a lot of other mouthpieces, tons of other mouthpieces. As we proceed along our journey of learning the clarinet, we make changes in our mouthpiece somewhat frequently, at least I do, and it, it's fun. It's fun in addition to uh, being useful in terms of getting information about what's working and what's not working. And when I say what's working or not working, I mean, am I getting what I'm hearing in my ear? That's really the whole reason to pick a certain mouthpiece, pick any of our equipment, is are we producing the sound we mean to produce? Even more importantly, how easy is it for us to do that? How hard is it for us to do that? And we want to find equipment that makes it possible to produce the sound that we want. That's the bottom line, the core of why we're doing this. The mouthpieces we're going to hear today are a 5RV Lyre, an M30, BD4, a B45, and a B40. I would say that all these mouthpieces fit into a spectrum of resistance that's comfortable for me. Uh, the resistance comes from different places in these different mouthpieces, and that's what we're here to talk about. Why? What's going on? Let's look at the chart. As we talk about this, I'm going to cut this down so we can just see the things that we are talking about today. There are two sets of numbers on this chart that are going to tell us a little bit about how this mouthpiece is going to work for us. The first number is tip opening. And the tip opening is how much space is between the tip of the mouthpiece and the reed at the very end that goes in your mouth. Millimeters matter here. Like the, the differences are factually small, but large in terms of the results. The other number, it's not even really a number, it's a characterization of facing length. And that is how long from the tip of the mouthpiece until the reed and the mouthpiece come together. That does a lot because uh, that, that's dictating how much of the reed is vibrating. And that's going to impact the feel, the sound, the response of every component of the mouthpiece. It's hard to nail that down because uh, there's a lot of factors that go along with that. One of the factors they don't talk about in this chart is the thickness of the rails. That has something to do with it. We're going to get into all of it. But let's just do a quick rundown of what we have and what we're going to see today. The 5RV Lyre is the closest, that's what we would say, the smallest, the closest of these mouthpieces. The 5RV Lyre comes in at 109 millimeters tip opening with a medium length facing. The M30 comes to us with a 115 millimeter tip opening and a long facing. Why the long face? Uh, the BD4, 115.5 tip opening, medium long facing. The M30 and the BD4 have thick rails. That does something to how they sound. The B45, 119.5 tip opening, medium long facing. The B40, also 119.5, medium long facing. Same numbers as the B45. The difference being the B40 has thicker rails than the B45. So the feel of it is different. Let's take a look at what some mouthpiece experts say about how this works. Uh, I didn't want to defer to my own characterizations on this because as I started talking about this in an earlier version of the video, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't saying stuff that wasn't true. Walter Grabner, 
Make some good mouthpieces. I don't own any, but I've seen his work. It's really good. I found this on the internet. And he says, let's get this straight from the beginning. Good idea. Regarding the tip opening, a more open tip requires a softer reed, right? Because it's a little bit more resistant because the reed's a little further away. Press it down a little harder in order to make a sound. The softer reed makes it a little easier to make that flex happen. A closer tip requires a harder reed. True, for all the same reasons, but in reverse. Regarding the facing length, this gets a little bit more complicated. A shorter facing, meaning the mouthpiece tip and where it touches is shorter. A shorter facing length requires a softer reed. A longer facing length requires a harder reed. These two factors work together in this way. A close tip and a long facing length would require the hardest reed. An open tip and a short facing would require the softest reed. And then he adds, it's amazing how much confusion there is over this. Also, reeds are not hard or soft. They are more or less resistant, depending on how they are made and the nature of the particular piece of cane. This is all good information. What is the facing, the curve of the window of the mouthpiece in which the reed vibrates? The window is the rectangular hole in the mouthpiece. It allows control and dampening of the reed by the embouchure. Expressed in a series of numbers, as we've seen, numbers describe the resistance curve and tip opening. Importance of the facing dictates how the reed will vibrate, dictates strength of reed required, dictates position of lower lip, influences tone, influences attack, influences speed of articulation. I like the distinction of the word influences in this regard. It's one of the many factors in all that. So the longer facing actually allows more of the reed to be vibrating. Let's be honest, the whole reed's vibrating, it's just how much is it vibrating. And with more of the reed not touching, that makes for more of the reed more actively vibrating. And that does impact how it plays. There's also how is the baffle, and the baffle is the diagonal part of the mouthpiece, and the chamber, which is the inside of the mouthpiece, the sort of tube part of it. And there's lots of magic that goes on there, and there's lots of things that happen. And there's the walls on the side that all does something, but it's not quantifiable in numbers for even people like me that are pretty interested. Uh, it can get very, very confusing. Let's jump into how I can demystify this. The 5RV Lyre with the medium tip opening and the medium facing length is a great place to start when you start your journey of professional level mouthpieces. I've got a video specific to student mouthpieces. So if you're just getting started with the clarinet, if you have a Yamaha, my conclusion was the 4C, good mouthpiece, you can use that one. Beyond that, the mouthpieces that tend to come with your instrument are not going to be that user-friendly. I would suggest purchasing a Clark Phobes debut mouthpiece. That's going to get you set up as somebody who's just learning the clarinet. It's affordable. It has properties of a professional mouthpiece. It's a very, very nice piece of equipment for a very, very nice price. Uh, Clark has done an, an amazing thing putting that into the world for us. When you feel it's time to take a leap into a more expensive mouthpiece, my suggestion is the 5RV Lyre. And the reason for that is it's kind of the center of how the clarinet is played. Uh, many professional players have played on this mouthpiece or a mouthpiece quite similar to it. The reason is with a closer facing, it is actually significantly easier to get the focus in your sound. And as classical players, that's something that's important to have our focus right where we want it, have it easy, make that focus sound. For me, I like to work a little harder for my focus. And that's why I like a little bit more open mouthpiece with thicker rails. So I'm playing currently on a BD4. The reason I like to do this is because I can hold that focus at louder dynamics. The danger is it gets, a, it can get a little fuzzy at quieter dynamics. That can be a challenge. There's no magic elixir here. I mean, you're going to have a focused sound more easily, but you can also lose that focus more easily. Once you get a more open, thicker railed mouthpiece focused, it's my experience that that focus will stay. You can really give it a lot of, give it a lot of gas and it will hold. It depends just a lot on our playing style, how, the shape of our mouth, the 
our embouchure, all sorts of variables that are hard to quantify, uh, particularly over YouTube. That is why the 5RV Liar is a great place to start. My experience with these mouthpieces was B45, 5RV Liar, B40, M13, and the BD4. That's the order I did them, but the ordering is unimportant. Uh, and in between that, I played a lot of other really wonderful mouthpieces. Van Dorn is not the only place you can get a good mouthpiece. It is a way that you can really find what's right for you. And you will, and once you find it, you will have a high quality mouthpiece. They're terrific. Um, so let's hear it a little bit. I recorded the excerpt from Tosca on all five mouthpieces. You've been hearing it beneath me as I talk. Uh, I have edited them together to hear what it, the differences of these mouthpieces sound like. I was surprised when I edited these together that there wasn't more of a difference in the sound because there is a difference in the feel. And that's what this comes down to. Again, you'll find a way to make the sound that you hear and that's your sound. It's a matter of how easy or how hard is it to make that sound. I hear this recording and I think to myself, well, there's not a huge difference there. And it's all within the realm of if I played any of these mouthpieces for a month, I will sound exactly the same as if I played any other of these mouthpieces for a month. I would make changes in how I adjust my reads, the reads I choose, and everything would balance out. But how do I find my place to have the articulation I want, to be able to have the easiest access to that sound? Which is why I have selected the BD4 as my mouthpiece for now. Using history as a guide, it's not a forever choice. Very rarely have I met somebody who's made a forever promise to a mouthpiece. There's no promise rings here. Now I wanted to see if I could find a difference in the overtones produced by these mouthpieces. And how I did that was I put it on the tonal energy tuner to show the harmonics that come out. They're all going to produce the same set of harmonics. It's just how present are those harmonics in the sound. So let's take a look at that. Any of these mouthpieces, I feel like I could play on today and feel pretty good about. I'm going to still play the BD4 because that's what I feel most comfortable with. I feel like it has the brightness and the ring that I want, but still the hold with the thicker rails 
and it just feels great to me to play. But when I hear the B40, it feels like home as well. And when I hear the 5RV Liar, I think, wow, that ring sounds really nice. I really like the way the, the throat tones sound, how those just come out and they're clean and they're clear. It's hard to balance the resonance and the focus with the warmth and darkness and the different kind of resonance that it comes with more resistance. There you have it. I hope this was interesting and fun. Please like and subscribe. Would you? I forgot to ask. Come back for more Super Square Clarinet Talk. See you next time. Bye.